Hi, and welcome to Everybody Has a Story. My name is Tatani Nguyen, and I'm sitting here today with Dr. Louise Edwards, who is a lecturer in the astronomy department at Yale University. Dr. Edwards, thank you so much for being here with us today. Ah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. Yale's definitely known in the field for having one of the most diverse astronomy departments in the country. How does that compare to your previous experience? When I first was interviewing for my position at my PhD institute, Laval, Quebec City, um, I actually remember that I chose it in no small part to go there because the dinner that they'd organized for me was all women. And this is amazing for a physics department. Usually it's very male dominated field, but there was who would end up being my advisor, who was a woman, and a postdoc she had visiting, who was also a woman, and a graduate student who was a woman. And that experience, I think, really helped me feel kind of at home at the department. So like, yeah, so likewise, here at Yale, where there are so many amazing women in this department, and also women of color, um, at least for me, it feels like a very welcoming uh, environment. And I hope that uh, that trickles down for the students as well, all the students at Yale. How do you feel like diversity affects the people who come into the department? Yeah, so I had this course that is uh, very oversubscribed and um, some people uh, ended, up not, ended up not being able to take the course. And I got emails uh, that said, I just want you to know that it was amazing for me to see someone like me teach the class. And uh, emails like that just make me feel like um, Diverse, diversity is important. It's important to um, have a range of people uh, in a department or in a school, in a range of positions. There are studies that show, right, that to be effectively mentored, you don't actually have to look like the person. And I think this is really important because there are, there is a shortage of diversity in some departments. Right. And um, it's important to know that everybody can help. Right? What's important is that if somebody comes to your door, you advise them. If somebody emails them, you answer. Right. Um, so even though individually it feels nice to see yourself mirrored, and that's important on its own, right. I really want to stress that everybody is a part of this, right? right? Somebody knocks at your door, answer them. So the class I took with you is it was Intro to Cosmology, which <laughs> is one of the main things that you study. And yeah, my main passion really is um, the study of the largest galaxies in the local universe. They're called brightest cluster galaxies. What an interesting question to ask is how did today's largest galaxies form and evolve? So how did they form and evolve? Ah, uh, we're <laughs> still learning. <laughs> Don't know exactly, but it seems that at least a big part of it is that small galaxies right. will form first. And then, you probably remember this, we'll merge together over ah. yeah, <laughs> long periods of time and form larger and larger galaxies. Yeah, so this is what it looks like is mostly happening. Yeah, so what differentiates a bright cluster galaxy from these small galaxies? Right. So you have to look and see how does the light change from sort of the center of the system out to the edges. And if you see a nice smooth transition, nice smooth change drop in the brightness profile, mm -hmm. uh, that gives you an indication that it's one system. If you kind of see lumps and clumps everywhere, uh -huh. then that gives you an indication that maybe it's still forming. Maybe these little lumps and clumps are their own galaxies that are about to move into a bigger, a bigger system. You're definitely one of the leading people studying these bright cluster galaxies. Uh, yeah, I'm one of many. Yeah, yeah, sure. So one could even say you've put your stamp on the field. That's <laughs> true. That's Speaking of stamps, <laughs> I hear that you actually have this Canadian stamp with your face on it. I was, uh, before I was a PhD student, mm -hmm. I was a master's student right. at St. Mary's University. So I was a graduate student there. Mm -hmm. And Canada Post was uh, doing a special for all of the universities that were over 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And Uni St. Mary's University was turning 200. Wow. And astronomy was one of their very first uh, programs, and they were very proud of it. So they wanted to have a student, an actual astronomy student, right. at the telescope uh, featured on the stamp. So, well, they took the picture of me and my colleague, Glenn Kapzak, uh, and neither of us knew who it was going to be until the great unveiling. So I don't know why they chose me, but they You're did. You're just incredibly photogenic. Well, <laughs> maybe. So now we've got an Everybody Has a Story classic, the speed round. What is the biggest thing you can imagine without getting a headache? <laughs> yeah, the week. <laughs> you are now a star. What kind of star would you be? G2, the sun. The denomination of your stamp is 48 cents. 
How much do you think a stamp of your face on it is worth? <laughs> Aww. Um, 48 cents. <laughs> Maybe 49 cents. Thank you so much for sitting down with us, Dr. Edwards. My pleasure. In my opinion, you're worth at least 50 cents. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> for all of us here at YTV, this is everybody has a story. And the, and the intersectionality of music and fashion. So through our perception of sound, aesthetic, music, and fashion,